1 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to go down to verse number 3. Verse number 3. <laughs> when you found that, would you stand in honor of the reading of God's Word? This is my final message today in the series of What Are You Thankful For? So uh, this week, what are you thankful for? And it's going to be the plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. Let's read right there in 1 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, thank God, reserved where? In heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love." in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I do want to say again, I'm so thankful for the blood of Jesus and the plan of salvation that takes away the sin of the world. And I'm glad, Lord, I experienced that at a young age. But Lord, it doesn't matter what age we are, you still heal, you still forgive, and you still set free from the yoke of bondage that would come upon people's lives. So God, I pray today that we would remember the joy of of our salvation, dear Lord, and that we would always uh, be happy to tell someone uh, what you have done for us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to ask a question to get started this morning. How many remember the joy that you experienced when you first got saved? Amen. 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 I tell you, there was nothing like it. It's hard to describe how good it felt when all of the weight of sin had fallen off of your shoulders. Amen. Uh, but we experienced a new birth and a new hope that shattered the despair that had overtaken our life. Most of the time, people have to get pretty low in sin to understand how bad off they really are and how much they need the Lord as their Savior. The song that we sang this morning, Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin, took on a whole new meaning for us when we got saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead has provided an inheritance that can never perish, it can't be spoiled, and it can't fade away. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. This morning, I want us to consider why so many Christians have lost the joy of their salvation. Now, can you look around with me and, and uh, notice that there's a lot of people in the world that claim to be Christians, right? But they're not happy. They look like the old... Oh, I was going to say something I'll probably get in trouble. Their appearance is as the old mule down the street. Right? <laughs> I don't want to compare them to a mule, but their appearance is kind of compared to that because they have no joy. I remember there was a song that I sang many years ago now. 
and is simply ask a question. What's wrong with my children? Why won't they praise me? Have I not given them everything, yet they have no joy? Oh my, I don't want us to ever get to that place here in this church. I want us to always remember what God has done for us. Amen. Where he's brought us from to where we are today. Amen. The things that are in our past are covered under the blood of Jesus today. And the things that we're looking for are up ahead in that place called heaven, right? Amen. But yet Jesus is giving us a taste of heaven, I believe, each time that we come to church and we start worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. Many have lost the praise that once came through their lips and instead they walk around sad, depressed, angry, complaining about everything in life. Do you know somebody like that? Don't call their name out, please. Okay? Yeah, don't call their name out. Just do you know somebody like that? Uh-huh. Believe me, I understand that the last year and a half or so has been a difficult time to say the least. And we're still going through some of the repercussions of all of that. But tell me, where and who have you been trusting for the help that you've needed during this time? Right? Who have you been trusting? The Lord. If you haven't been trusting the Lord, then you've been trusting the wrong source. Amen. It's not the government that's pulling us through this thing. Right? But it's the hand of Almighty God that's working in our country and in our individual lives and churches. Amen. Our joy and our salvation comes from up above, not here on this earth. It's wonderful to see a newborn Christian share their faith with someone else. Have you ever got to hear somebody that just got saved start testifying to, to you about what the, the Lord has done in their life? Boy, that's a blessing, isn't it? Amen. Because they're excited about what the Lord has done. But many times we see mature Christians lose the joy of their salvation. They were once happy. They once told people what the Lord had done in their life. But for some reason, that temperature gauge cools down and they don't talk about it as much. But in Psalm 51, verse 12, David said, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. So we see here it's very possible to get our eyes off of Jesus and let the temptations and the trials that we face drag us down. Amen. If you look around in this world, it's easy to get depressed. But keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't look at all the mess that's going on in the world today. Keep your eyes on the Lord and it won't drag you down like that. In our scripture this morning, Peter is writing to Christians that are being persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. And they've been scattered, if you will, over the Roman Empire at that time. Uh, and he starts his address to them by glorifying God. Amen. Look at verse number 3 again with me. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many know that praise to God is always in order? I heard somebody say one time, it's always in order, but somehow it's gone out of style in a lot of churches. I don't want it to be that way here, right? Amen. Amen. It's always in order to praise the Lord. No matter how difficult things may seem in your life. 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 18, we sang this this morning. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Even in the middle of COVID, we should still have a praise on our lips. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. If it, and it goes on to say there in verse 3 of 1 Peter chapter 1, 
which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What does that word lively mean to you? Not dead. Not dead. Something you can feel. I remember an old song, I, of course, being the musician and the singer that I've been down through the years, a lot of songs stick deep in my soul, right? Amen. So there was a song that I used to sing. I probably could still do it if I needed to. It says, something I can feel, something I know is real. In troubled times, he's peace of mind, a hand to hold on to. All this joy he's placed within my heart, I just can't conceal. For when he saved me, he gave me something I can feel. Amen. Something I can feel. Praise the Lord. It's because of the boundless mercy of God that he has given us this privilege to be born again. It's because of his boundless mercy. Our hope is not just wishful thinking, right? Amen. There's a lot of people say, well, I hope something's going to be this way or the other. Well, that's not the way our hope is. We know, we're convinced, amen, that uh, uh, Christ has provided for us on the cross of Mount Calvary. Amen. This mercy focuses on how wretched we once were. If you go back and look at your life, look at your life, where God has brought you from to where you are today, how many know that your life was pretty bad? Amen. Amen. You might not have been the worst sinner in the county, but sin is sin, right? Sin is sin, and God said sin will not enter into heaven. So thank God that the sin of your life can be forgiven, put behind you under the blood of Jesus, and you can find peace and assurance in Jesus Christ. Amen. Is it possible that some folks have forgotten where they once were compared to where we are now? Yes, there's another old song that says, Remind me, dear Lord, roll back the curtain of memory now and then. Now, I don't encourage you to live in the past, right? right. Don't live in the past because the past will get you down. But when the Lord reminds you of where he's brought you from to where you are today, that's when you need to say, Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise and thanksgiving won't flow freely from a heart that uh, has forgotten completely the stench of sin that you were in. You need to remember those things once in a while. That makes you more grateful. Uh, what does the scripture say? To whom that much has been forgiven, they'll be very grateful, right? Amen. But uh, just a little bit, you might not think about it so much. But I can tell you now, uh, I'm glad for the plan of salvation that has freed me from sin's curse upon my life. Thank the Lord. And that salvation is only by the blood of Jesus. The old song says, what can wash away my sin? Oh yes, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Yes. So let's not forget how much that God has saved us from. So we should still praise God for the new birth through the plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. When you look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith. Through faith. Well, that's something you're going to have to use right there. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You and I have no right to boast about anything from our former life. Amen. You can boast about God because God is good. Amen. God is the one who has brought you to where you are today. So it's all right to give Him praise and glory and honor and boast about Him. Amen. But not about anything you've done yourself because we're not worthy. 
saving grace, and I want to give you a, uh, let's see, what's the word? Acronym, I believe. And I've, I've given this before, so I'm just reminding some of you, but those of you who may not have heard it, grace, G-R-A-C-E, stands for God's riches <laughs> at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace, saving grace. That means it's uh, something that I could do nothing to earn for myself. I couldn't have earned my salvation. It's a gift of God. Amen. Amen. When somebody gives you a gift, it's not because you necessarily earned that, right? They're giving you a gift because they love you. They appreciate you. God's gift of salvation is because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So this salvation that I'm talking about has given me a living hope that will not fail me. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Yes. Look at verse 4 there in 1 Peter chapter 1. It says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. If your hope is built on the economy, your career, your family, or your investments, can I say to you that all of these will come to nothing this morning? You can't build your life on things of this world. Amen. You've heard it said that you've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse going to the cemetery, right? If you have, I want you to take a picture of it and send it to me. Right? Oh, man. Worldly hope will remain in this world. That's as far as it's going to get you. Amen. But those whose hope is in Christ, it will last forever. And forever. Amen. The inheritance that God has reserved for His children is priceless and is kept in heaven for us, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change or decay. Amen. Moth cannot uh, tear it up. How many have ever gone to the closet and you thought everything was good till you pulled out your favorite jacket or uh, blouse or whatever it might be and you saw moth holes in it? <laughs> well, it's not the time for air conditioning like that. Okay. So moth can destroy, can it? Amen. How many know that rust can absolutely eat something up? I can tell you this because mom and daddy had a 1977 Chevrolet short bed uh, school bus yellow truck. And I, I kid you not, it was one of those that the salt had literally eaten out the fender wells, right? The door, when you shut it, it went flop, 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 flop at the bottom. You know, it was even so bad we had to put a, a rubber band around the rear view mirror so that it would stay up there. Amen. So I can tell you, and it was a bomb, a bomb. I, I drove it to, uh, to school one day uh, when I was in West Nashville. And when I got into my truck to leave after my classes that day, I started it up. And I had a, a buddy in one of my classes said, come and look at this thing I'm driving to this week. And so he came out there, and when I started it, I stepped on it, and I went, and when I did, it set the alarm off on the car beside me. I said, bye. I had to take off. Oh, me. Rust changes things. <laughs> Amen. Thieves can break through and steal those things that you hold so precious. Amen. But aren't you glad that this hope that I'm talking about cannot be stolen? It cannot be changed. It will not fade away. It's going to be there for you in heaven if you'll fight the good fight of faith today. Hallelujah. 
Amen. So worldly faith remains in this world, but the hope that Christ has will last forever. Amen. This inheritance that we're talking about is the substance of our hope. It's not something that you've really worked for. It's something that God has provided for you. Amen. If our hope is on this earth, then we will be up and down like the waves of an ocean. How many have ever been on a cruise before? All right, let's get a little closer to home. How many have ever been out on the lake or the river? I see a lot more hands there. And when the wind gets up, you do this deal, right? I don't think I could take that, and I know my wife couldn't take that. Oh my, she can't hardly take some of the curves on the roads that we have around here. But uh, an ocean or a body of water, she wouldn't like that for sure. Amen. But I can say to you that uh, the economy, it changes uh, uh, like uh, the waves of an ocean. And maybe our health will change from time to time. But hope that is centered on heaven is stable and a living hope that will never die. Amen? Amen? Verse number five says, Who are kept by the power of God. Who are kept by the power of God through faith. That's something you have to appropriate this morning. Through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen? When the Lord comes back, boy, I'm ready for Him. Amen? Amen? I'm ready for him to come back uh, just any time now, Lord. Uh, amen. But that faith that we've had is going to be revealed uh, in us to salvation when he shows up. What does the scripture say? He who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. There are two sides to the perseverance of a Christian. The first one, he is shielded by God's power. Shielded by God's power. We are protected by the mighty hand of Almighty God. Hey, how many know that His angels are all about you? Amen. I believe that. I believe His angels were with us this past week as we were traveling uh, from here to there and back. Amen. But the second part of the perseverance of the Christian faith, it's by our own faith. We accept all that God has for us by faith. We can't bring it to pass, but we are fully trusting the one who can. Amen? He can bring it to pass. Aren't you thankful for the keeping power of God until the day that we truly receive that salvation that He has promised us? That heritage, uh, our inheritance, uh, all the joys of heaven which will be revealed for us to see in that last day. Matthew 24 and 13 was where that scripture was, of he who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. The Bible speaks of salvation, and I want you to get this this morning, in three tenses. The past, the present, and the future. The past is when a person first believes and is justified. Amen. Just as if I'd never sinned. Amen. When you uh, look back from where you are today, that's the past, right? When you got saved. Hey, even a minute ago, that's the past when you got saved. Thank God for that. So justification is the beginning of your walk with the Lord. Repenting, asking Him to forgive you of the sin that you have uh, carried around for however long with you but get justified, saved, if you will. The second, being the present tense, uh, would be that process of sanctification uh, in your life. It makes us more holy, putting on the character of Christ. And we should strive daily to be more like Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Don't let anything creep back up in your life, but try daily to be more like Christ. And then the future tense uh, will be the coming salvation, which will be the glorification of your body, which happens 
When we see Christ, amen. How many remember the old song that we sing, it will be worth it all. When we see Jesus, life's trials will seem so small when we see him. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrows will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Amen. So when you see Christ face to face, it's when this old body is going to become glorified. Amen. The old man that we once had, this old body we have now, is going to be changed forever and forever. We will have our new resurrected bodies and will no longer have sin or even a sin nature about us. Because that sin nature will cause you to go into the wrong direction if you're not careful, right? Amen. But when we get to heaven, all of that's going to be completely gone. We were born into sin. Amen. But we will com completely be saved from sin and temptation. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Hey Amen. What does that mean? We'll be glorified at that point. Hey Amen. These things should still get us excited in our walk with the Lord. We should still be excited that one day we're going to leave this life behind and we're going to step off on that beautiful shore called heaven. Amen. Amen. There's coming a day uh, where we will no longer wrestle with pride, fight against lust or temptation. Amen. But one day we will be completely like Christ, glorified with Him. Look at verse 6 with me. i got to hurry. It says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. What is Peter saying here? Let's, let's break it down if we can. Peter is telling us that we should be glad, rejoicing a lot when we look back, or we look, excuse me, to the future of our salvation. Not look back, but look to the future of our salvation. For those of you who have a copy of our family's CD that we made last, the very first song in there, it says, I know what lies ahead, right? Now, your eyes have never seen it, right? But you can read in the Bible and you know what is waiting for you on the other side. There's joy, there's peace. All of those things that we need more of here today, that place is going to be full of it. Amen. When we recognize all that the plan of salvation affords to the believer, we should continue to rejoice. But also remember, for a little while, we are still on this earth. And it may be necessary for us to endure many or multiple, as indicated by that word manifold, temptations or trials, which may bring distresses, and discouragement to your life. Nobody ever promised you when you got saved that you was always going to be on the mountaintop. But you know what? He did promise you you won't always be in the valley too. Amen. Amen. There's going to be mountaintop experiences and valley experiences, but that's what makes us grow in the Lord, right? Amen. Verse 7 tells us how we should come out in the end of all of this. It says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. How many know that gold will perish? Amen. Sure it will. If it gets in the, the right conditions, it will perish. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So Peter is indicating that the trying of our faith is actually valuable. <laughs> you may not uh, believe that at the moment, right? If you may not believe that. You may say, Lord, why? Why am I having to go through all of this? But the trying of your faith is actually valuable. 
Amen. Trying and trials usually indicate afflictions uh, that will test your faith, showing and proving that it is strong, that it's genuine, and that it's pure. So he goes on to compare your faith to gold, which is also tested by fire and purified or refined in the fire. Uh, what does it do when you get gold good and hot and it melts? Uh, you can scrape away the, the dross, as they call it, the, the stuff that's impure from the top of it, and you'll have the pure product left. Amen. Whereas gold can perish, but your faith can be made stronger and purer, and your faith is far more precious to God than a chunk of gold in His hand. We pay lots of money for gold around here on this earth, don't we? But you know what? He paves the streets of heaven with it. So we don't need to think so much about the worldly things, but think about what God has gone to prepare for us. So if your faith remains strong after being tried by fiery trials, it will bring you praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Notice I said it will bring you glory and honor and praise because of your faith being tried and being precious and being true. The chorus we sing, it will be worth it all, I tell you, that's a true chorus right there. I like that. It will be worth it all because sometimes we go through some pretty tough stuff, right? Some hard stuff. But I can tell you now, it's going to be worth it when you look at Jesus face to face. Amen. Two more verses say this. Look at verse 8. Whom having not seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye have, uh, you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Verse 9 says, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So we have never seen the Lord yet, right? But yet we love Him and we trust Him by faith, which gives us unexpressible joy that makes us bubble up inside. Amen. How many remember that chorus that says, It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. They're singing and shouting, Since Jesus made me whole. Folks don't understand it, nor can I keep it quiet. It's bubbling, 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 bubbling day and night. Amen. The results of our unwavering faith will be the salvation of our souls. Amen. The glorification of our souls when we see Christ. Again, I'm so thankful for the plan of salvation in my life. How about you? Amen. Amen. If there's anyone this morning that you haven't experienced that plan of salvation, the scripture says today is the day of salvation. Would you stand with me? With every head bowed and every eye closed for just a few moments, I want to ask a simple question. Is there anyone here with us today that you'll say, Brother Kent, this plan of salvation sounds like a great thing, but I haven't experienced it. And I want to. I want to pray and I want to ask the Lord to forgive me of my sins so that I'll be ready to meet Him face to face one day. Amen. And I'll be glorified in my new body and get to spend the countless end ages of eternity with Him. Is there anyone that you'll raise your hand where I can see it and say, Brother Kent, that's me right there. I need to experience the plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? I tell you, the Lord is in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I ask you this morning, would you step out by faith and meet me at this altar? Let's pray together. And let's ask God to work in your life. Amen. If there's anyone else, be making your way to the altar right now. Let's pray and ask God to save and forgive. Amen.